Good morning, church. So very good to see everyone this morning. We are so glad you're here. I want to welcome you. Welcome those joining us online this morning. We've got a great day of worship planned ahead of us today. Randy is back, of course, and Jeff and uh, Wells 5 and 6 are done. And God just had his hand and his touch upon that all the way. Um, And we're just going to celebrate and rejoice today. Rejoice that we serve a loving God. Jesus is with us, loves us. Rejoices with us on the mountaintops and uh, and carries us through the valleys and his love just surrounds us Psalm 23 6 says surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Won't you stand as we sing this morning? Walking the wayside, lost on a lonely road. I was chasing the highlight, trying to satisfy my soul. All the lies I believed in left me crying like the rain. And I saw lightning from heaven. I've never been the same Here we go I'm gonna climb a mountain I'm gonna shout about it I am a child of love I found a world of freedom I found a friend in Jesus I am a child of love of the fire but I saw you in the flame just when I thought it was over you broke me out of the grave I'm gonna climb a mountain I'm gonna shout about it I am a child of love I found a world of freedom I found a friend in Jesus I am a child of love yeah, oh, oh, I am a child of love. Yeah, oh, oh, I am a child of love. Nothing can change the way you love me. Nothing can change the way I belong to you. Yes, I do. Nothing can capture. I am a child of love I found a world of freedom I am a child of love I'm gonna climb a mountain I'm gonna shout about it I am a child of love I found a world of freedom I found a friend in Jesus I am a child of love lift your voices this morning. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Creation revealing your majesty From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings 
all exclaiming indescribable uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing God all powerful untamable awestruck we fall on our knees as we humbly proclaim you are amazing God who has told every lightning bolt where it should go or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow In the sun and give source to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night None can find them Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful, untamable, all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing God. Indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name, you are amazing God. Hey man, you can be seated. Jesus, we just come to you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for just another day of life and for breath of life. Father, we thank you for the blessings, for creation and putting us in it. And Lord, we're just... We just rejoice today that Randy and Jeff are back, Lord, and for all the wonderful things that occurred on that mission trip. Father, we just continue to praise you, and we are just awestruck of what you can accomplish, Father. Lord, we just uh, pray that we would walk a path that is pleasing to you, and, Lord, that we would uh, just be disciples of your kingdom and good stewards. And, Father, that we would go out and make disciples as other, of others. Just open up, we open our hearts and our minds now, Jesus, to you as we just continue to praise you and just receive your word today. In your name we pray. Amen. As we sing this next song, the ushers will bring around communion, and if you'll just hold that uh, to the end of the song, then we'll have a devotion and take communion together. <clears throat> every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in one. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. 
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, live for you, live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken, and I will build my Make sure I have it up here so everybody can hear me. All right, so Psalm 37, starting in verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit everything to you to do. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. And then down to eight, verse 8. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It will lead to harm, for the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Soon the wicked will disappear. Though you look for them, they will be gone. The lowly will possess the land and will live in peace and prosperity. I don't know how many Disney fans we have in this place. I know we're down here. But uh, in Finding Nemo, Dory's big thing is just keep swimming. And I think that's what these verses tell us. Just keep swimming. No matter how hard things seem to be, no matter how cold it is outside, or actually today it's nice and warm, but it's rainy. You know, don't really want to go out and do things, but the Lord is with us and we can just keep going. You know, no matter what. You know, that's basically it. Just keep going. Keep Keep swimming, and God will be with us. Jesus will be with us. Let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll take communion together. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the rain, for the crops, and thank you for the sunshine and warmth that you give us, even though it's raining. Lord, uh, just just thank you for the power and the spirit to keep going through whatever is holding us down. In Jesus' name, I say amen. All right. We take the bread because it is his body given to us. Then together we take the juice. All right, I'll go ahead and pray for the offering as they come around to pass out the the plates. Lord, thank you for everything that you give us. Thank you again just for letting us be alive and move on. Be with anybody going through any grieving or pain right now that they will know that you're with them and you give them that strength. In Jesus' name I say amen.
Well, good morning, everyone. Duo, do unto others. This is my duo story. Sounds like a commercial, right? So, anyway. Now, I already, uh, when I got the envelope last week, I already had a person in mind, someone that I worked with, and uh, yeah, she's actually my supervisor, but uh, just a little bit on her story. Uh, she's a single, single mom raising a couple of foster kids, and they're little. They're like three and four years old, but she's always, you know, given, just given and given, and it seems like everybody takes advantage of her so I thought you know well this might be something good to help her out a little bit and she already knew the story about our, our, our uh, outreach program because I gave her the little QR code tag and all that and she looked at it and all that good stuff but uh, anyway when I handed her the envelope I said you know on, this is on, on behalf of me and our church at Southwest and I said we want to give this to you you can spend it on however you want you know I said, preferably on yourself, you know, is what I wanted her to do, and you know, not just give it away or whatever to for someone else, because I wanted her to get some uh, pleasure out of that money as well. But anyway, she was real excited, took the money, told me to tell you thanks and thank me, and uh, I don't know, it was just touching. She was she was about in tears, so I think she was going to take that money and, and go spend something on herself for it. So anyway. That's my duo story, so I'll be looking forward to yours. Well, I feel like I've been around the world since I seen you last time. Maybe not quite all the way around it, but a big chunk of it. Uh, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer as we get into a time of study. God, we just bow and honor and praise and glory to you. There is none above you or beside you. No one can hold a candlestick to you. You are God. You're the one that spoke this creation into being. You're the one that gave us life. You're the one that puts the breath into our lungs. So let us never doubt your power, your strength, your glory. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace and mercy that you have shown to each of us for salvation that we can have in and through you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the power that comes from you and the wisdom and guidance and counsel. This day as we study your word, as we reflect on the mighty works you have done, we want you to be lifted high. We want our minds and hearts to be filled with you. We want our hearts to be open to you. So I just pray right now for each man, woman uh, in this room, for myself, that we would open ourselves up to you to listen uh, uh, attentively and expect you, Holy Spirit, to commune with us. It's in your almighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, it does feel like it's been a while since I've seen you. I guess it's only been uh, three Sundays, so a lot of time feels like has passed to me. But I have spent a, a lot of time over the last couple of weeks crying uh, alone in my room. <laughs> Um, just overwhelmed by God's, I'm going to try not to be that way <laughs> with you all, um, but just overwhelmed by God's amazing love and grace. Um, I, I won't be able to share with you all the stuff from the last couple of weeks today. I'll, I'll try to share illustrations and things. I've got some stored up for you. I interviewed um, a pastor that had uh, grown up in Somalia. Um, just a quick version story. All of his family was killed by um, guerrilla forces. He escaped into Kenya. Kenya's way of handling their border problems is they stuck them all on a barge, towed them out in the ocean, and cut it loose. Um, that barge sunk off the coast there, and uh, he was one of the few that survived and swam back. Uh, but long story short, he came to uh, Tanzania, was in a Samoan refugee camp, was in the mosque on Friday night, and on Friday or Sunday morning, he was in the church. He was taking his mosque little hat off and sitting in church and <laughs> back and forth. But he gave his life to Jesus Christ and is one of our preachers at one of our Haven of Peace Christian churches now. Um, there's, there's a number of stories like that. Probably one that overwhelmed me most um, 
one night I was in Babati, Tanzania, and we were staying in a hotel, and they make you fill out a plethora of information if you're a foreigner, you know, when you stay anywhere. And so somehow it was just I and this lady that was a manager, and um, she was like all up in my details there, you know. And uh, as I'm writing down my information, she says, uh, what's that? And I just written down my occupation as pastor. And I said, well, I'm a pastor. And this was a uh, pretty much, I mean, everywhere you looked, you saw Muslim people or it was a very heavily Muslim population. And she said, are you born again? <laughs> and I said, well, yes, I am. And uh, she said, I was born again in 2013. And then, you know, it was just one of those reflections of, how God is true and right and his glory will shine in the midst of the darkness. Um, the last place we were at in Matuara with Pastor Fabian, he was working in the midst of a city that is massive. Uh, they are the major producer of uh, cashews, which I don't have no problem with that. Um, but 95% Muslim population there, and he's preaching the gospel with no worries or cares. Now, is it, is it hard? Well, absolutely. I mean, uh, there are times that he's been thrown rocks at and mistreated, and they've, tried, they've been sacrificing uh, live animals on his property and stuff. And so on that Sunday morning, I and the other preachers were there. I'll have to try to get you some pictures or video of it. But there was, you know, 17 Tanzanian pastors going on, Kwajina Yesu, Kwajina Yesu, walking all over that property saying, we claim this land in the name of Jesus Christ. Right here, right now, we redeem it through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so, you know, people were showing up, neighbors were coming and things of that nature. Very amazing to see. However, I want to show you, uh, you know, we've been talking about this do unto others, which, you know, I feel like, um, for me, I'm overwhelmed that I get to be a part of this big do unto other thing that just happened. But as we look at that, it says in the scriptures in Matthew 7, 12, so in everything do, unto, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law of the prophet. The first village that we went into, um, we didn't even have the rig with us. This was the ones that didn't even know we were coming until about uh, six weeks ago, you know, before it occurred. And um, we were met by like 400 people dancing and throwing fl flowers and plants and whatever they could find, waving them in the air, all with their, uh, uh, you know, their uh, tribal attire on and things like that. And that time I was trying to hide out and cry because I was just overwhelmed. The only reason they were so joyful was because they were going to get water. Can any of you believe that? Can you fathom that? I mean, we take that so for granted and yet here are these people are going crazy. And I'm like, hey, y'all may want to wait a minute. <laughs> Why don't you wait until we hit water? <laughs> and then let's party after that, which I did yesterday, by the way, and I missed out on that. Jeff, however, is still over there. He'll be there for another month until like November 15th. He's finishing up the water towers and things of that nature. <laughs> Point being, <laughs> Jesus is what it's all about. Lifting up the name of Jesus. Uh, we've been able to uh, have times of preaching and sharing in uh, communities with the entire village of people praising the name of Jesus Christ through the midst of what we have all been a part of. Uh, I wanted to share these pictures with you first, and I want you to try to uh, just think about what you notice about the pictures. And we'll go through them fairly quickly since my wife is in children's church today. <laughs> All right, what commonality did you see in all those pictures? Well, there's children, yes. I was thinking in a, a bigger, the category of children. <laughs> People. You know, there weren't any pictures of a well or water or any of that. It was people. And uh, that was a big reminder to me this time. We're there for people. We give them a gift of water, but we're there for people. 
and it was amazing. We went in uh, to Dirma, which we were in two years ago, um, which, by the way, was a very frustrating but also an incredible time at the at same time. Um, the reason it was so frustrating is because Dirma has literally not done any of the stuff that they said they would do. However, after I got over my frustration of it, the whole time I was there, I never once saw them turn off the generator pump and water. Somebody was asking just a few minutes ago, I think it's somewhere in the nature of 10,000 gallons of water a day being pumped out of there. That's a whole lot of water. But the thing that amazed me as we went around there, and this was what Jeff kept pointing out, look at the people. They look healthier. They look stronger. A lot of them look a little bigger, <laughs> you know. And, and you can see the difference just going from there to the village that we were drilling the new water well in. Ultimately, people is what God is in the business of. Jesus came to restore, and that's, that's what you and I are here for as well. Um, of course, I'm hitting the face every time I go over there that I feel like I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> you know, I see these men, and I see these women, and I see the hard lives they live and the way that they share their hope of Jesus Christ, the way that they tell other people about Jesus, and I wonder what in the world am I doing? My confidence of who Jesus is and who God is has definitely been renewed an awful lot. To be able to stand in the midst of Muslims and say, Jesus is the way and the only way. You need to turn to him with confidence because I know he's the truth. They may not agree with that, but yet we see hundreds, if not even thousands, of Muslims coming to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. A lot of those are happening in supernatural ways that we can't explain. But I have one that can explain it, and you know who that is. It's God. This morning, we're going to take a look at Acts chapter 4. And uh, I had not planned this. I literally got home and had no idea where we were headed this morning. Lo and behold, Acts chapter 4, verse 5, starts with the message of Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman, guess what, at the well. Hmm. A little ironic, isn't it? It says, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar. Um, before I jump too far into that, I just want to give you some uh, little thought to this. And I want you to kind of let your, your radar be, be on check for this. Um, look how far Jesus will go for any human. Okay? And just think about that as we're reading through this. Near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. All right, cool thing. Wells were the location of life. And everywhere that we've seen the prophets go, they talked about the blessings of wells. They were named after them. Here we have Jacob's well. Do you guys know who Jacob is? What did his name become? Israel. You know, we see that this is a well that was dug hundreds of years ago, and yet was still producing water. I want you guys to think about this just in, in, in somewhat in connection to what we've been doing. Six wells now, all in the name of Jesus Christ. Wells that will be there to their great, 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 great grandchildren with the promise and hope of who Jesus Christ is. That's what that is all about. When, yeah. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Now, um, just before we jump onto the next screen, think about what he's asking. You guys remember what a Samaritan woman is? Literally, that people of, group of people was considered to be kind of a half-breed. They were not full Jews. They had intermixed their bloodlines, and so they were no longer were considered part of the Jewish line or, or pure, and so they were looked down on uh, to begin with. And then the second thing that was a big issue Anybody know what that might be? Can I use the pronoun she? She was a female. Um, and, you know, that was a big issue back in those days. Actually, it's still a big issue uh, in those areas today. His disciples had gone into uh, the... Did I cut something off there? I guess I did. Anyways, it says that his disciples had gone into town to buy food... Um, for them. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, 
If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Now, doesn't that sound a bit perplexing? Any of you ever been in a discussion like that before? You know, you think you're after one thing and you get another. Um, I've been there before, you know, those tough conversations where, you know, you want some advice, but you get what you really need instead of what you want. And this is what Jesus is saying. Listen, it's not water that you need. It's the living water. Of course, each of you in this room know, as I was mentioning here earlier in this sermon, when we go over to Tanzania, we go in the hope and name of Jesus Christ. The uh, well that we actually did first was the second well, actually, but we drilled it first. I don't know how it just kind of flip-flopped. It was a very weird, peculiar uh, circumstances, but it was amazing. Um, but we went out and prayed over the spot. There was three, three uh, survey spots where they said would be good spots to drill. We went and prayed over one. Uh, they asked me to pray over it, so I got down on my knees and prayed on that spot and asked that Jesus be glorified and that we draw water from this spot. Then they said, okay, let's go to the next spot. I said, I'm not doing that. And they're like, well, what? Did we offend you? I said, no. I said, we prayed in the name of Jesus Christ for this spot. We don't need to pray over another spot. Now, I'll tell you one thing. When they were drilling and we were 600 foot down and still not hit water, I started going, Oh, Lord. But as you guys know, and you've probably seen on the videos, the uh, water came forward in a major way. Um, Jesus had told her, I have living water for you. He goes on to say, and I'm just reading through this whole section today uh, without a lot of breakdown. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as did also his sons and his flocks and his herds. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I was reminded of that yesterday. You know, the scriptures tell us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, that every single human being, whether or not they realize that they have been made in the image of God or not, that God has written eternity in their hearts. Did you all know that? King Solomon tells us that in chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes. That means for every human being, they know, they can feel there is something more in their soul and spirit than just their physical body. That's why even so many people that don't know Jesus, uh, that don't know necessarily any certain religion or whatever, they still long for something more outside of their physical body that's because god created us that way we're made in his image and god tells us that there is this eternal life our eternal souls that's what we're after and it's high time we get serious about that we see so much being lost here in our country and so much being gained in another country well guess what i'm not happy with that i want to see gains in both countries all right i asked specifically of our pastors and brothers there and sisters, that they pray for us, that they pray for that renewal, they pray for the spirit, they pray for the power, they pray for evangelism, they pray for the hope that we will proclaim Jesus no matter what. I don't see many of you dealing with the problems that I see dealt with over there, where they go up and tell their friend about Jesus and then wonder if they're going to get um, attacked that night or their house broken into or their stuff stolen. Any of you dealing with that? Maybe you are. I don't know. But a lot of times, I would guess, and it hasn't been there for me too, that it's more of, oh, I don't want to offend somebody. I need to live a quiet, peaceful life. I don't want somebody to be upset with me. I don't want to hurt our friendship. Well, I tell you what, and we know it full well, there is an eternity to pay for it. We have to proclaim Jesus Christ. That's our mission, that's our goal, that's our hope, that's our power, that's our salvation. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't go thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go call your husband and come back. All right, so we have a little twist in the story that starts to take place here. 
Um, first, she says, hey, I don't want to have to keep coming back to this well. You know, give me that water so I don't have to go thirsty anymore. Wouldn't that be nice? Literally, and Nyasa Ninda, the first well that was drilled, those folks were traveling 20 kilometers, which is like 12.25 miles, one way to get to the well at Dirma to get their water and then walking back. You guys probably have heard long enough the side effects of that, that kids were missing school. Uh, literally, the school that they can attend is 20 kilometers away or 12 miles away. And so the kids get up and walk to school 12 miles. How do you kids feel about that? Anybody want to walk 12 miles to school? You know, it is. It's just unreal. The woman said, I want this water so I won't thirst again. And he says, go call your husband and come back. What do you think Jesus was doing here when he says, go call your husband? <laughs> he was revealing himself, but he was also revealing her. How many of you put up walls when you're around people? How I many of you uh, tend to wear masks when you're out in public? Or I'm not talking about the mask with COVID or anything. I'm talking about the masks that we put on to hold up our front. You know, I'm... I, I'm trying to be as genuine and pure as I can preaching. God has actually blessed me quite well because I've been trying to put on a mask today that I feel great, and I don't. But I do feel great up here preaching, so I may just keep on praying and preaching so I can feel great. All right? Uh, he said, go call your husband and come back, and this is what the lady's response was. I have no husband, she replied. And this is very revealing. Jesus says to her, you're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have five hus you've had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have uh, just said is quite true. Yikes. Any of you ever been busted out of the closet like that before? I mean, this is tough to hear, right? And she says, sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you... Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. And then Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. And he wraps up with this, Yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshiper the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. This is huge. A big fundamental change of what they understood about religion, what they understood about God. Here Jesus was explaining to a lady that probably uh, across most boards, you know, be considered a gal that people might look down on. I really want you to understand that, and that's why I brought up that piece in the beginning. How far would Jesus go for any person? Who's worthy? That's our motto, our message. You are worthy. Who's worthy? Is your neighbor not worthy about telling Jesus Christ? Is your fear of how they may respond, are they not worthy to know? Think upon it. God tells us, quite simply, and especially in a story like this, here, we think, oh, well, it's, my goodness, and she has been around the corner a few times. Five different husbands living with another man right now. You know, she was looked down upon, and yet, what did Jesus say? He was there for her. He talked to her like a real human being. He loved her, and he told her the way to true truth in Jesus Christ, but how true worshipers are going to be found. And you know what the message was to that what are the true worshipers that God is calling upon? What are the true worshipers? The ones that worship in spirit and in truth. They're inseparable. Now, I just want to just talk about that for a moment, then I'm going to show you a few more pictures and a couple of videos. Um, but when we talk about worshiping in truth and spirit, understand this. When we talk about truth, what is truth? What is ultimately truth according to the scripture? Jesus literally describes himself as truth. And that truth is gr grounded in the truth of God's word. 
That's why I'm so fundamentally uh, strong and pushing and sometimes maybe even a jerk about telling y'all, if you're not reading your Bible on a daily basis, you're just hurting yourselves. If you want to grow in a relationship and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, get into the Word, the truth. But Spirit, what is it to worship in truth and Spirit? If I went around this room right now and I, I peek out here, I think probably for the most part, if I said, do you believe in Jesus? I would say the vast majority of you are going to say absolutely. But then if I started asking you more personal questions about the Spirit, do you believe in the Spirit? What have you and the Spirit been doing lately? What's your relationship with the Spirit? A lot of us, we might be a little bit less prone to answer. Bottom line to it is, God calls his true worshipers to worship in spirit and truth. And that means that we accept the Holy Spirit into us, and we abide in that Holy Spirit. That means we're communing on a daily basis. When we're driving in the car, when we're doing our activities, when we're working at work, that we're training our minds, that we're setting our heart to commune with the Spirit. When we're faced with difficult situations, or we don't know what to do, we're saying, Lord God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, guide me, direct me, tell me what to say. Any of you ever practice that? You bite your tongue when somebody says something to you that offends you? Bite your tongue. Lord God, what would you have me say in response? It's hard to practice, but it's what we're called to as his Christian men and women, his children. Jesus sets a new standard. He provides the way through his own life that he sacrificed on the cross. His blood was poured out to cover over our sins. That's the only righteousness we have. Do you all understand that? Do you know what that really means? That's why when I was sitting there and these people were dancing, and any of you guys see the videos where they were jumping up and down? I don't know how that's a dance, but they just jump up and down nonstop. And I mean, they're jumping like this high. I was trying to get a team together for basketball. I think they could be pretty awesome. They're not good with their hands, though. I was so overwhelmed because, honestly, and I know this may be kind of hard to understand, I didn't feel worthy of being the person to be the hand of that gift. I didn't feel worthy to be the man to be there to share that with him. And I know God was doing mighty work. But he uses us. And we have to be available. And we have to be willing. No matter the cost, no matter the price, no matter what. Now, we've done something great in Africa. And they talk about Southwest over there like you're the cast meow. All right? Literally. They, they know the name of the church. Like I hear it out of their mouths when I go over there. And they still call me Galate. And I told them I know what that means, which is biblical for Goliath. Um, but they use a term that the white preachers come in of Jeff and I. Um, and that's a little humbling. I want you to know, we've done great work there, and it was very successful. There wasn't a single thing that I was on the list to accomplish that God had not accomplished while we were there. It was a miracle. But we got a whole lot of work to do here. Um, and I'll just finish up with, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't read this last part. This is kind of a really important part, too. It says, the woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And then Jesus said, I who speak to you am he. Most important part, if he ain't who he says he is, then it ain't worth the hill of beans. Here's some vid uh, pictures of some of the things that happened. Um, these men here, well, actually, there's a lady in there as well that's a pastor. Uh, there's like 16, well, 17 preachers, if you include me gathered there for that conference. These men literally traveled, some of them, 15 hours on a bus. Uh, and then right on the buses there, uh, it's bad. Traveled 15 hours to be there from all over the, the nation. I mean, we're literally talking from the East Coast all the way to Illinois, you know, that kind of distance that they were traveling. Just rugged, rugged conditions, and yet they joined together for this purpose. Um, 
This, this church here, which a lot of you probably are not too familiar with, this is a church in Matuara. This is Pastor Fabian's church. Um, beautiful. He's built this from hand. This is the one that's located right in the middle of the Muslim city. And uh, he has actually a beautiful plot of land, and a lot of people have been trying to steal it from him. This picture here comes from Nasaninda. Uh, this was where we drilled the first well. And uh, was there late enough at night that I could cast some really excellent light. So I was, I was super excited about that. Next picture, just a, uh, a picture of their water source um, they brought for us to use for the initial startup water. Um, I assume you probably can see the problem with that. This next picture shows when they were having that celebration meal before we even started drilling water on the uh, left-hand side here. That's the water they were getting ready to wash our hands with to eat the lunch, um, which a lot of you might have liked that lunch. It was goat's meat and stomachs and intestines. and I didn't even ask any questions. I just ate whatever was in front of me. Thank God it kept me strong and whole until I got back to my house. Anyways... Somebody stepped up and said, hey, don't wash the Americans' hands with that water. Use some bottled water. I was thankful for that, but also felt extremely humbled by that. Picture on the right. Can anybody tell the difference between the water? This is the water that you all provided through Jesus Christ. This is a gift. Um, just absolutely amazing, yes. And I wanted to show you a picture of one of the new generators. If any of you have been following along over the last six years well, uh, you know that our generators, um, have we've started with gas generators. They were lower-end generators, and we've already replaced one of those in Gisambala. A lot of you helped out with that. But these are now the generators that we're putting in. These are full diesel commercial generators that should last for a very, very long time. Another picture of the water filling up at Nyasa Ninda. This is the, uh, that's the generator actually from the outside. We were told that they ran that generator all day long that first day, um, just filling up water like that. Uh, as you can see, it was producing quite well. It actually has not done quite produce good quantities of dirma, but it will is more than sufficient for what they need, and it won't run out. That's the beauty of it. So, um, this next one is Pastor Matisse's. Video of their water coming out. Actually, this is a well that we kind of thought at first wasn't going to produce water, and we were questioning it, and it, it actually is producing more water than the other one. So. And I think that is it for the pictures. I'll try to share some more pictures as uh, over the coming weeks. Um, if you ever get tired of hearing about it, then um, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you ever get me aside somewhere, I'll talk about it till next week. So, um, But I'll try to do it sparingly at different times. Again, the passage said, the Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. I listened to one of the chief elders of the tribe there in Yasaninda. It said that he'd been living there for 40 years and had been trying to work on water to figure out some way of getting water to their community some way. Um, he was just talking about the miracle of God. 
that Jesus Christ, you know, that they'd been praying and praying, praying for this day. And I told them, you know, um, they had me stand up and address the whole crowd. And I told them, you know, hey, we're a church that loves God. We love Jesus. And we were praying too. And that God pricked our hearts for their situation. There's only one church, one faith, one baptism, one Jesus Christ. And we're completely united in that doesn't matter how much difference separates us or how far away we are from each other which by the way it's a really 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 long distance away i i can tell you firsthand um i did want to conclude uh, this morning just with this this thought to leave for each of you um i know and it, it's not really a, a fault of any of yours or mine uh but I take water for granted. Um, you know, I try to be conservative. If I am brushing my teeth, I make sure to turn off the water while I'm brushing my teeth, and I turn it back on. I'll even take the army showers sometimes. Turn on the water, soap up, turn it off. Once I'm ready to rinse, I'll turn it back on. How many of y'all do that? <laughs> oh, we got our paintings up here. You know, a lot of us in the room, do you, do you think we probably take it for granted? I would say most people in the U.S. anymore are probably irritated if they don't have at least two bathrooms in their home. You know, these kind of things. It's just those kind of things that we take for granted. One of the big pictures that hit me while I was away was this idea of how for granted we take that water. And then I was thinking of that picture or illustration of how often we do that with our Christian faith. Our Christian faith is easy. We're not persecuted. We can be here any Sunday we want. No one's going to be outside trying to stop us from coming in. Many of you are not probably putting up with much hardship because you're being here this morning. We take that for granted a lot of times. I'm not, I'm not trying to point fingers. I'm saying me as well. But my friends, we can't take that for granted. We're losing the battle here in the U.S. Flat out. Our friends... Our families, quite bluntly, many of them are not going to spend eternity in heaven. And that cannot sit well or okay with us. When we say that statement, you're worth it, they are worth it. That's why we're going to fight for it. And we're going to pray for it. And we're going to ask God to intervene. And we're going to take tags and put it all over the place. Or yard signs, whatever it takes to let people know that Jesus is the Christ the Son of the living God, and that we accept Him as our Lord and Savior. You guys all in? All right. Let's go ahead and add a word of prayer here. And by the way, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, if you, if you need to renew your relationship with Jesus Christ, we're going to encourage you to step out and do that in faith this morning as our praise team comes up and leads us. Father, we give you the honor, the glory, and uh, just all praise. You're so worthy. Jesus, you are the only way. Help us to see that and understand it. Lord, help us to learn what it is to allow you, Holy Spirit, to be uh, in us and to be that deposit guaranteeing eternity. Lord, I pray over these men and women that you would put a boldness in each of us that only you, Holy Spirit, can give. I pray that we would be true worshipers that indeed worship you in truth and spirit. Again, God, we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory for the clean water that have been given to these villages. We pray that the, the, the seed that is growing of you, Jesus Christ, would just overwhelm those villages and that uh, whole area that people will come to know you as Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But God, this day I also pray for that same seed to be planted here, that you would put in us a spirit of uh, just strength and power to be hard workers in, at, at those crops and harvests, to see people come to know you as Savior. Thank you again uh, for using me, for using each of us here. Thank you for the opportunity we have and privilege we have to worship this day. It's in your almighty name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
came down from heaven's throne. The earth you formed was not your home. A love like this, the world has never. I praise let there be no higher name Jesus Son of God You laid down your perfect life You are the sacrifice Jesus Son of God You are Jesus Son of God You took our sin last song if you have any prayer concerns or prayers you'd like to come up here and leave at the cross you're welcome to do that praying uh, bench here on the side someone will come along beside you and pray with you pray over you uh, or if there's anyone here this morning that hasn't accepted Jesus Christ and you feel it on your heart to do so now's the time to do that a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail 
There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome And the grave is overwhelmed The victory is won He is risen from the dead And I will rise when he calls my name No more sorrow, no more pain I will rise on eagle's wings before my God fall on my knees and rise I will rise there's a day that's drawing near when the stop breaks to light and the shadows disappear and my faith shall be my eyes Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won he is risen from the dead and i will rise when he calls my name no more sorrow no more pain i will rise on eagle's wings before my god fall on my knees and rise that same feeling that we should give we prayed just like we did on the way out so we need to pray for thanksgiving <laughs> i could use that <laughs> if, you, if you want to come forward we'll we'll pray mm -hmm. around randy <coughs> while you're walking up uh, a couple other ones we want to pray for are susan burke uh, she's in the hospital with covid on a vent not doing too well and we want to keep cindy's family in prayer too for the burial of her dad yesterday so i want to keep that in prayer You want to lead us? All right.
Father, we know they had you, Jesus. We know they had you in their hearts. Father, we pray for that same passion, yes, that same Jesus. desire that they had. But if we don't, Father, help us to catch on fire. Help us to be on fire for you. Lord, we just want to pray over Randy that you want to lift him up and take your healing from him. Father, we pray for the ministry in this church. May, Father, may you guide and direct us each and every day. Lord, as we just give you praise and give you honor. Amen. Well, you guys sure make it awesome to have a church family like this to come back to. So, uh, announcement-wise, is there a soup thing happening after church? Okay. There's a soup meal after church for anybody who'd like to stay for that. Uh, I don't really know a whole lot of details. Just Food, eat, casual, okay. So we'll hang out and have some fun. Um, and then next week, there's like a dessert thing directly after church service. So if you would like to bring a dessert and share just a uh, quick gathering time, appreciation and Thanksgiving. Any other announcements? She's... For a transplant of a liver? Okay. All right. I'll pray for that as well. Father, we give you the praise and honor. We do lift to you, Tommy's sister. We just pray that uh, this liver would, uh, they would find it, uh, that this transplant, that this healing that needs to take place. Lord, we know that you're the maker of livers, and you're the one that can heal and restore and touch her and uh, just miraculously do that. So we pray for that. We pray for your uh, strength and healing, and most importantly, that she would know it's you, and that she would love you, Lord Jesus, and that she would know eternity in you. Thank you again for church family. Thank you for the time here. Thank you for the food that we're getting ready to eat, and uh, just the fellowship. You are so good, so awesome. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm a mountain, I'm gonna shout about it. I am a child of love. I found the world of freedom, I found a friend of Jesus. I am a child of love. Yeah, oh, I am a child. Somebody at church this week, everyone. Give God your best. Let him do the rest.